right, it's been a while. Let's do it right here. Let's talk about Vancouver Canucks prospects at the World Juniors 2020. Clay Emu made a video about this yesterday, so I highly recommend you check that out. I'll leave a link in the description because he's going to be talking about the same players and some of the same plays that we're going to be highlighting in this video here today. Now, this video is a little bit overdue. We're talking about day one stuff. It's already day two, day three, day two of the World Juniors. Yeah, exactly. I'm totally in the game right now. But the Vancouver Canucks have four prospects at the World Juniors this year. We're only going to talk about two of them, but I am very happy to see Vancouver prospects in the tournament regardless. Of course, two of them we're going to be talking about today, Vasily Podkolzin for Team Russia and Niels Hoglander for Team Sweden. The other two that we're not going to focus on too much, but are indeed at the tournament as well, Tony Utunen of Team Finland and Karol Plasek of the Czech Republic. The first two games that we're going to be highlighting in this little video here, Sweden versus Finland on day one and Russia versus the Czechs on day one as well. These are important games because the Vancouver Canucks prospects in both of them had goals. And in fact, that's actually kind of wrong because all four Canucks prospects played in either of these two games. Two of them had goals and they weren't in the same game. Let's talk about Niels Hoglander first because everybody's been clamoring about it in my comments and I didn't make a video about it initially because I literally talked about Hoglander like two or three days ago. So I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to make two videos on the guy within the span of two days. But regardless, that's what we're talking about here today. It's lumped in with a Pud Colson talk, so that's what makes it appropriate here in my eyes. Niels Hoglander did it again. He did... We're, we're not going to call it the Svechnikov. I called it the Svechnikov a little bit earlier, but I think it deserves a little bit of a contextual naming here based on who says it and where they're from. He did it again. He did... The Zorro. That's what they call it in Sweden. And in fact, Niels Hoglander is the guy who usually has that connotation with the Zorro move. Andrei Svechnikov in the NHL does it where he's behind the net, picks it up, and he kind of scoops it in and moves it over to the other side. Nils Hoglander does it in a much more fluid motion, and he does it in a much faster motion, and he does it in a way that makes his hockey stick look like a sword or a dagger, hence the Zorro nickname. This is the third time Nils Hoglander has done the Zorro in two seasons. He's done it twice in SHL League play, and he's done it once here at the World Juniors already. When he did it in the SHL most recently, he had a defender on him, and he pulled the puck back behind through the defender's check, scooped it up, and lunged forward as he did the Zorro move. We talked about this in my Hoglander video a few days ago, and that was really, really great. That was his second Zorro move in the SHL, but then he did another one here in the World Juniors, which was much better than any of these Zorro goals we've seen in the past. This time, he's got it, he's coming along behind the net, and as he cuts over on the far side, he scoops it up and very quickly pushes it forward onto the far side, and then he swoops it in. It's so fluid, and he just does it very, very properly. The best way that you can do the Zorro move, Hoglander does the Zorro move, and it's proven to be a really good game in general for Hoglander. He gets that goal, he gets an assist, and things are looking really, really good for the young Swede. This is why people have been clamoring about this player, folks. So skilled, so incredibly talented, and he's so incredibly mature for his age in terms of his physical development. Sure, he's only like 5'9 or whatever, but he's been playing in the SHL for all these years because his fitness level is so high up there. And these Zorro goals are just an example of how good his hockey skill actually is. People have been clamoring about this Zorro goal online in Vancouver, 
just over the past like 36 hours because it is like 1 p.m. when I'm recording this. Yeah, sorry, I slept a little bit late, but Hoglander is still turning heads and that is incredible. People have been thinking about the idea on whether or not Hoglander is actually NHL ready now because of how dominant he has been. And that's not something that I'm going to say you're not really supposed to be thinking about. It's certainly a discussion to be had considering he is already playing in a men's league, in a pro hockey league. But whether or not he's going to make the jump immediately to the NHL, I'm not necessarily too sure about that. We talked about this exact same discussion back in my Hoglander video a few days ago. But let's go over to the other Vancouver Canucks prospect who had a goal. It's Vasily Podkolzin for Team Russia. And Podkolzin had a ton of pressure coming into this tournament. He really did. Because he was drafted as the 10th overall pick by the Vancouver Canucks in the 2019 NHL entry draft in Vancouver. So Canucks fans had very immediate exposure to Pod Colson and the kind of game that he provided. There was many controversy as to whether or not he was the best player available, but a lot of people would say that he was. Pod Colson, it was in a position where he had himself a goal for Team Russia in this game, and it was a very, very, very skillful kind of goal. Pod Colson sets himself up in the hash marks. He's bumping and shoving his way towards the front of the net like Pod Colson is known to do. He's very effective in that role, by the way. And the puck comes in, there's a shot, and it goes off of something. It bounces up, and then Pod Colson takes it, he gloves it, and then he just baseball style swings it into the net. It's a very nice hand-eye coordinated goal, and this is kind of a testament to Pod Colson's skill because he does have his own set of skills as well, on top of being a very good physical presence and a very good hockey player, just in general. And by hockey player, I mean not just the skills and the shooting and the scoring, but all the things, the board battles, the rough and tough, the drive, the overall skating ability, and the speed. He's got a pretty good head on his shoulders, and it's why he was very well utilized in this first game. Now, Russia did lose, which is kind of unfortunate. It was kind of an upset by the Czechs over there. But Podkolzin was out there in a very specific situation and a very specific role. Pod Colson was out there as a defensive presence, and it was something that a lot of Canucks fans were very happy to see. He only had one goal, but sure, Pod Colson was out there on a 5-on-3 shorthanded, helping his team on the PK. He was out there fighting for the puck in board battles. He was out there charging up with controlled zone breakouts. He was out there feeding his teammates some pretty good quality passes. Pod Colson was in a really good position because he had all the playing time and all the playing space to play his game and be effective in the way that we know Pod Colson can be. The fact that they trusted Pod Colson with the role of a 5-on-3 short-handed penalty killer role is a testament to the work ethic, the drive, and the overall skill set that Pod Colson possesses. We always knew that his head was in the game for the team 110%, and that was on display here today. Even the goal that he scored, he was out there in front of the net trying to shove his way to the crease area. That's a very nice trait to have, and it's a certain skill set that not a lot of Vancouver Canucks players in the organization in general have. We got guys like Roussel and guys like Furland who are supposed to do that, and we had a guy like Burroughs who did that a lot before, but Pod Colson combines everything from the skill, the finesse, the shot, to the work ethic and the board battles and the physical play as well. So, seeing Pod Colson against Czech Republic was really, really nice because we got a good glimpse of the skill set that he does possess. So, ah, uh, my goodness, we're at nine minutes already. Let's wrap the video up here because I didn't really have an angle to display with Carol Plaschek nor Tony Utenen either. I didn't watch these games because I was watching Team Canada against the US and that kind of had my full attention. But overall, Vancouver Canucks prospects at the World Juniors have been off to a great start. They're 2-2, two and because two, Pod Colson and Hoglander beat Plaschik and Utenen's teams. But hey, the ones that did well, they did really well. 
goals and assists for these guys, and it's really, really great. Hope you enjoyed this video, Soldier Dark Troll Slay 9, and bye.